Hey fun fans, Nick Jr. back here from Michigan, and I am back for our fourth edition of our technical season updates of this year's game, Rapid React. Just a reminder that this is not an official ruling to consult uh, first on the FRC Q&A for any further questions or official responses. Uh, please do that in the necessary forms. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at team updates 7 and 8 that have been released this past week and then take a look at I believe five Q&A questions that have been uh, released in the past seven days that uh, we think are important for your team to know to ensure that your robot is legal. Special thanks again to uh, Tosif from the FRC Fun Group uh, for helping me grab in some of these Q&A questions as well. Uh, another Robo Rio update that will need to be completed for legal events, rookie award eligibility clarification, and all of this and more coming up in this edition of FRC Updates Now. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First Updates Now is supported by Stryker Careers. If you are a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many first alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. First Updates Now is supported by Kettering University. Over one-third of Kettering's current students are former robotics team members. Go pro at Kettering University and get a free t-shirt. Students in grades 8 through 12 and located in the continental U.S. scan the QR code and complete the form by the date on screen and receive more information about Kettering. All right, so getting to take a look in here, uh, Team Update 7, which was released this past week. Um, starting off in general, Autodesk Inventor files uh, for the playing field and uh, containing the step format uh, and converted to the Autodesk files are available from the playing field page. Um, I know my team last year used those specific things a lot, looking at how a robot was going to line up to the color wheel and such. Those can be super useful um, if you haven't had the chance to do that yet. Uh, it also lists that uh, the list of events that have opted for remote interviews for uh, remote judging that's been available in one of our past videos that we talked about. Uh, the Ventura County Regional and the Aerospace Valley Regional have both opted to go to remote interviews for judging. So if you plan on going to those, please, please, please make sure that you take a look and make sure that you're prepared for those judging um, situations. Uh, the 2022 remote judging plan and the single day event plan have also been updated to note that teams may submit their summary business plan to be eligible for the entrepreneurship award and teams remain eligible for awards even if they are unable to attend the remotely judged event due to COVID restrictions or precautions. So just because you may have a couple of team members that may have been exposed or tested positive before an event, you still are eligible uh, for awards that would be there. So. Um, just a couple notes in um, section 9.6 of the robot rules. Um, just some clarification here. On R620B, they added for the PDH 15 amp or lower with the exception of a single 20 amp fuse for powering a PCM or PH. Uh, so important if you plan on using that, taking a look at that. Um, R621, just adding the, the word fuse and then going up to uh, 20 amps on that sense. So important to take a look at that. R622, uh, use appropriately sized wire, all circuits shall be wired with appropriately sized insulated copper wire. Um, and they also noted that it needs to be um, 20 amp fuse protected circuit for the minimum wire size on that end. So, and then moving forward to 116.3, they added that in the qualification matching criteria, first it's ranking score, second it's average alliance match points not including fouls. I know this originally said average match points, so people weren't sure if it was you and your opponent average together. It's your just average alliance match points. Moving to Team Update 8, another extremely important control system update um, that is now necessary to be used um, for the to be legal at competitions. It's uh, 2022 underscore V4.0. Um, which corrects the issue of analog device gyros and addressable LEDs, as well as to fix a few bugs reported in the LabVIEW libraries. So please, please, please make sure before you do all of this work on your code and may have some weird issues with analog device gyros or addressable LEDs that's noted here that you update to that. You're going to need to do it when you get to competition anyway, um, if you haven't already. So please, please, please make sure that you take time into consideration of that and update that as soon as possible if you haven't already. Um, Remote judging plans, there's been another two events that have been updated uh, that have opted for remote interviews, and that's uh, SBPLI, Long Island Regional 1 and 2. So if you're attending those regionals, please make sure to contact your event coordinator or look out for emails regarding that um, so you're, again, accurately prepared for that. 
rookie award eligibility. Uh, the description on the team attribute page has been updated to clarify that both 2021 and 2022 rookies are both eligible for rookie awards this year. So if you're a new team um, during the infant recharge at home season or you're a new team this year, you are eligible for the rookie awards. So rookie all-star, highest rookie seed, and items like that. So please make sure that you know you're, if you're a rookie team, that you take a look into the rookie all-star award um it, you know it's a it's a great award uh, that i think um really is highlighted well enough but um can really be celebrated as well i know that when my team was a rookie they wanted the michigan state championship was able to get a trip to worlds um from that award so take a look if you haven't already on that uh, on r501 allowable motors um, they added in the section um, of the motor allowances if the qualifying actuator is then used at 24 volts it must be approved by the manufacturer at 24 volts so can't just be using it at 24 volts if it's not approved by the manufacturer at that sense and then r701 is updated to the new version that was released um, the other day to account for that so again if you, if you have not I'm going to say it one more time if you have not taken the chance to update uh, your Robo Rio please make sure that you update uh, to 2022 underscore v 4.0 for that sense looking at a couple q and a's um again this is uh help with uh Tossif from uh fun frc taking a look at this um so for question 65 this one's uh normally you know moving forward we're going to be trying to find q and a's that have been within the past week or so of when this video is going to be released um, to try and get you the most up-to-date information of us combing through the q and I know it can be very overwhelming looking at so um, but this is one that I think we missed last week that is important to note that's not super clear um, that I, I at least didn't notice at first but question 65 states in the uh, asked by FRC 6665 uh, in the hangar if you are holding on to two bars at one time which one gets you the points um, and I know in past first games, the assumption has been, well, whatever the lower one is, you're going to get the points for that. And that, that's the same here. Um, but it's just the official ruling that if you're, if you're contacting um, the lowest rung and the mid rung, um, you're going to get the points for the lowest rung and not the mid rung. So important to take a look at that um, when you're you know, planning strategy and trying to plan how all three robots are going to end up on the hangar if you do have three climbing robots in that sense. Question 74, questions about tele-operated period asked by FRC 7566 uh, during the tele-operated tele period will the human player be able to throw the ball to the hub with his hands in a kind of a basketball as well as in the autonomous period and the GDC responded about a week ago saying that per H504 during tele-op cargo may only be introduced to the field by the human player and through the guard so you will not be able to throw um, you will not be able to throw cargo um, to the hub in a basketball motion. And uh, it will only be allowed to be through the guard. So important to note that you you know, you may, you may are allowed to throw them in teleop, uh, but you are not allowed to throw them. Or I'm sorry, you are allowed to throw them in autonomous, but you are not allowed to throw them in teleop. Question 76, questions about the positioning of the robot inside the tarmac at the beginning of auto, asked by FRC 7566 again. Uh, at the beginning of the autonomous period, the robot may be inside the tarmac. In topic 6.1.2 of the manual, it says that if a team that wants to change the robot's positioning for some reason, it must notify the judges. If two or more teams ask to choose or change the starting location, how will the robots be repositioned? Uh, if a team wishes to modify the robot's position in its tarmac before the match, they must notify the head referee um, however, please note the request may be denied based on the time and intermits of this match. If the additional team wishes to reposition the robot within the tarmac and the order of the placement matters to either both alliances, the order of placement detailed in section 1.2 is followed. So important to note that you may ask to reposition your robot, but please note that it may be denied as well just due to the start of the match. And oftentimes in the first couple of weeks, matches are running significantly behind. So please be cognizant of that and ensure that you're asking in a politely manner if you are asking to be moved. Taking a look at question 80, answer, or, or, I'm sorry. Taking a look at question 80 asked by FRC 8285, um, entering the hangar. Is it legal to enter the hangar from the side, therefore bypassing the low rung? Being that the low rung is lower than the max starting height of the robot, it would be beneficial to enter the hangar from the side so that the robot did not have to shrink in height to enter the hangar from the robot. So they're asking, instead of coming straight on to it, uh, they want to come from the side and be able to swing in there um, and for the GDC answer there's no restrictions to this um, you are allowed to uh, enter the hangar zone from the side to get better positioning 
And one more we're going to be taking a look at today. Um, you know, question 81, transitively contacting an opposing robot who is contacting their launch pad. And this was asked by FRC 5675. Uh, rule G207 states, let them shoot. A robot may not contact either directly or transitively through cargo. And regardless of who initiates a contact, an opponent robot whose bumpers are contacting their launch pad. The question is, can a robot transitively contact an opposing robot that is touching their launch pad through another opposing robot? For example, a red alliance robot pushes a blue alliance robot into another blue alliance robot that is contact with their launch pad. Transitive contact through another robot is not a violation of G207. So, therefore, if a red robot is pushing a blue robot on defense and they are close to the blue launch pad and there is a blue robot at the launch pad, if that blue robot is pushed into that blue robot that is contacting the launch pad, it is not a violation. So, if two ro a, red, a, rotor, a red robot and a blue robot are pushing each other, and say the red robot has a much stronger drivetrain than the blue robot and is pushing them into that blue robot that is touching the launch pad and shooting, that is not a violation, essentially, is what First is saying here. Um, but again, everything official is coming from the Q&A. You know, anything that I say is not official. I'm not, I don't work for First. I'm just trying to help other FRC teams out by taking a look at some of these because I know it can be very difficult to sift through the Q&A, um, as, especially if you have the uh, RSS feed in Slack. I know it gets very long sometimes and important to take a look at those notes as well. So uh, again, we're going to be doing this for the rest of the season. Please make sure to comment in the YouTube chat if there's anything that you thought we should have covered or have questions about. I'm more than welcome to try and provide any more context to that. So uh, again, this is Nick Jr. for first First Updates Now. Thanks again. Thanks to Kettering University for their support of this video. Over one third of Kettering's current students are former robotics team members. Go pro at Kettering University and get a free t-shirt. Students in grades eight through 12 and located in the continental US scan the QR code and complete the form by the date on screen and receive more information about Kettering. Thanks to Stryker Careers for their support in this video. First alumni and mentors are making Stryker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Stryker knows that those in first are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life-saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.